Okay, today we're going to learn how to create a controller join screen. This is the sort of thing that you find in your typical couch co-op game where players uh, connect with their controllers and press a button to confirm that they are joining the game. Um, and it also gives players a chance to see which controllers are actually properly connected to the machine. The first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to add the top level node. Um, so we'll call this a join screen. The join screen uh, is going to be a control node and I'm going to add a theme that I made beforehand just to make things look a bit nicer. So join screen. The way that I sort of envision this is four columns, each corresponding to one of the players. So let's uh, let's just get this uh, set up first of all. So we'll make an HBox container to arrange the columns horizontally. So the HBox container, we want it to stretch across the entire screen. So there we go. And then each column is going to be a panel container. And we want these to take up about a quarter of the screen. Now, of course, the thing is the HBox container controls the size of the panel containers. So in order to make sure that they take up a quarter of the screen, right now the size is 488. So let's set the minimum size to 488. And now even when the HBox container resizes them, they will stay this size. So then, so here's an example of one of the panels. We want a nice icon making it clear that it's a controller. So let's add a texture rectangle. And then I have here a controller image. And I don't really like it being up here at the top. I would like it to be more centered. So let's add a center container um, and put it inside there. And then I think we'd also like some text prompting the player to press a button to join. So we'll add a label. We'll say press A to join. And of course, we don't want this label right on top of the controller. So in order to organize it, we'll add a VBox container. And we will move both of these things into it. And then also we will align it with the center. There, uh, we have there a nice little image and we can also color it. Let's modulate it red. In fact, uh, we could actually, if we want the text to be red too, we could just modulate the VBox container. And there you have it. So then we're just going to make four of these and have them be different colors. When the player presses a button, we want this text to change to indicate that the player is ready to go. Well, first of all, let's call this um, player one. And let's add a script, uh, which we will call player. And so we'll have a variable is ready, which indicates whether or not the player is ready. Uh, it starts out as false, of course. And I'm going to add a set get function. So set is ready, so that when this variable is changed, um, it will automatically update the text. Set is ready. And then um, obviously we want to set is ready to be the new value. But also, um, if the value is true, then we want the, the label to read ready to show that the player is ready. And if the, the value is false, then we want it to read what it currently does, which is press A to join. Great. All right, so we've, we've got that all set up. And the next thing that we need to do is we want to create three other players. So now uh, we have four players. We probably want them to be different colors so that they have some way to distinguish each other apart. So let's just change the modulates on the VBox containers here. It's an easy way to do this. Set this to yellow. Yeah, so now we have we have our four uh, controller colors. It's it's not very colorblind friendly, but 
that's something we can fix later. We don't want all of these to be visible if the player doesn't actually have that many controllers connected. Let's, well, first of all, let's hide all of these and let's attach a script here, so join screen. So first of all, um, on startup, when the join screen node is readied, we are going to figure out how many controllers are connected to the machine. We are going to make those players visible. And so the way we can do this is uh, there's a function called input.get connected joypads. And so if we go and take a look at this function, it gives us an array with the device IDs of all currently connected joypads. So we're going to iterate over those and set the players visible if they are connected. Um, and actually, before we do that, just for convenience, let's make just variables to refer to each of these. Um, so let's call it devices equals player one, player two, player three, player four. So we're going to iterate. So four ID in input.get connected joypads. We're just going to set the visibility of that device to true. So devices ID dot visible equals true. I currently have uh, one joypad connected. Let's make sure that that works. So I'm running the scene. And as you can see, we only see the, the first joypad showing. We're good there. Of course, it might be that players start the game without all of the joypads connected, and then they realize it later and have to connect some joypads late, in which case we want those to show up on the screen. Fortunately, um, there is a signal in input called joy connection changed. So basically, whenever you plug a joypad into the computer or take one out, this uh, input will emit this signal. We can use that to make the other joypads uh, show up. So let's connect that signal. Um, so input dot connect, uh, joy connection changed, and we will create a new function which we will call on input joy connection changed. And then let's define that here. So this has two arguments. There's device and there's connected, which is just a Boolean called device ID. So it's not confusing with our variable devices up here. Connected. Basically, what we want is uh, to set the visibility of the associated device to be equal to whether or not it's connected. So that's pretty easy, actually. Um, we just say devices uh, ID um, dot visible equals connected. So let's try that out. I'm going to run the scene, and I am going to add another controller to the mix. So we have our first controller, and now let me add my second controller. And there we go. Uh, so that is connected. And if I disconnect it, it goes away. The last thing that we need to do here is we need to make sure that when the player presses the button, these will change uh, appropriately. But we're going to define the input function for this. So func uh, input. So whenever an input event occurs, this function will be called. We want to make sure that's the right type of input event. So like we don't want like a keyboard button or a mouse press to activate this. So first of all, let's let's make sure that it is a joypad button. So if event is input event uh, joypad button. And second of all, we want to make sure that it's the right button. Because if you look back at the text here, you press A to join specifically, not just any joypad button. So. Let's say if event dot button index. Actually, let me go back for a moment. So button index is a property of the input event joypad button class. It's basically an identifier for the button. We're going to use the enumerated value. So these are Xbox controllers. Um, I mean, there are lots of different controller types that you could connect, but we care about these ones. And specifically, we care about this one, Joy Xbox A. Let's make sure that the button that the uh, that the button is that. So if event button index equals Joy Xbox A, the last thing we need to check is that it is pressed. So if event dot is 
pressed. So if you, if we go back and remember, we have is ready. If it's pressed, um, then devices. Um, and now we need the ID. Uh, so if you look at input event, it has the device property. So we can use that to access the device ID. So devices uh, event dot device is ready to true. And I think that should do it. So let's let's try this out. Uh, here's my player one controller and I press A. And as you can see, we are now ready. And then let's con let's add another controller. All right, and that is how you create a uh, join screen. So this should also give you an idea of how you can handle uh, multiple controller inputs to your game, which is something you need if you want to make a couch co-op or a couch multiplayer game. Thanks for watching.